12 minutes left to play in between Laney and Josie and in our regular season here on Game Night Live. Wildcats third and 13 from their own 16. It'll be Sumter to throw and incomplete. He was looking for Jarvis Washington. A.B., you've got another update from that big Jefferson County, Screven County game. Well, it ain't a good update if you're a Jefferson County fan. Boy, Screven County. Mm. Is that third? What's that? Is that 37? 37 to 7. They were both undefeated coming into uh, this game. And, yes, yeah, Screven could end up being the number one team in the state going into the playoff. Unbelievable. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, Nathan is saying in the local CSRA poll, maybe bumped them up to number one mm -hmm. because you got Thompson struggling, and they lost last week. North Augusta struggling. I think Burke County's probably won Screvin number two, but I would agree with that. Screvin's showing something tonight, though. I thought Jefferson County would win that game in a close, close game, and they're getting beat pretty handily right now. So Josie with a key defensive stand, and Sumter's kick with a lot of bounds at the 34-yard line, and that's where the Eagles will have it. Well, Coach Arnold, when I spoke with him, was very worried about that scrubbing defense, and for good reason. They have shut down. Jefferson County, I think, was the highest scoring team or second highest scoring team in the state in any classification coming into that game, and they're being held to seven points. No wonder Screven shut out Laney. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I said Laney actually called some really good plays. They had screens that caught them off balance, and but the scrub, that, those two blitzers, remember the linebackers, little, not – Small, just tall and lean linebackers. They blitzed the entire game. One of them was Kayshawn Robinson. And, boy, they gave uh, gave him fits. Thompson now starting to pull away from Richmond, 48 to 34. Well, how big was that Josie defensive stand? The Eagles have the ball at the Laney 33-yard line. And here goes Myron Godby dancing his way uh, for maybe back to the original line of scrimmage. I think that might have been a different ball carrier that time. Oh, it was Fluellen, actually. Yeah, it was Flewellen. Yeah. And Evans continues to hang on, but barely. 34 to 28 over here. Evans trying to win that region title. Flewellen actually lost three on that play, so the Eagles going the wrong direction. Second and 13. In the fourth quarter, Josie, now they can't afford to come up empty here. They've got to get some points. Not with this field position. No. Well, I figure they'll get the ball back at least one more time. And, yeah, and you're down two scores, and you've been you had a hard time stopping them. Kind of been a bend but not break defense for Josie. They need to score and then a stop defense. Green pass set up for Godby, but not a whole lot there. Uh, up to the 37-yard line. Not even back to the original line of scrimmage, so it's going to be third and long for the Eagles. Speaking of big games, the new number one team in college football. Yes, sir. Tomorrow, you know, the hedges. It, you know, what's funny is in all my years living in Augusta, and I'm wondering if you've noticed the same thing, this is the least amount of chatter I've heard from South Carolina fans the week leading up to oh, no doubt. the Georgia-South Carolina game. I have, Nathan says he's heard some stuff at his work. But I, 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 know I have a lot of friends that are South Carolina fans, and I haven't heard from any of them this week. But I... I think in, uh, Matt Lane down on the field says, you know, South Carolina's a 24-point underdog. I think it's closer than that. We'll see. I, I, I think you're probably right, but I, I don't I don't see any scenario where South Carolina <laughs> wins, though. <laughs> Man, this is just a year where Georgia's got a superior team. It has had a different feel to well, it. Well, Georgia's got playmakers on defense for the first time since Thomas Davis and that crew were around, and it's showing in Kirby Smart being a great defensive mind, and he mix in a great, you know, great stable of running backs and a quarterback who's not making mistakes. And it's, uh, you know, they've, they've played well. And the crazy thing is they had no clue how good they were when they went to Notre Dame and won. That makes, to me, that victory even that more impressive. I think if they play Notre Dame now, even as good as Notre Dame's playing, I think Georgia beats them worse. I just think they're playing so good right now. I'm really glad I made that trip now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could end up being a pretty special year. A lot to happen still. They've still got – you know, tough matchups with Georgia Tech and, you know, tomorrow with South Carolina and Auburn. As Flewellen fires for the end zone, and it is knocked away by Dykes King. Raleigh Roundtree, the Josie head coach, rolling the dice and going for it on Ken, uh, Ken Nugent. One call, that's all decision by Roundtree to go for it on fourth down in this situation. I don't think I ever recall 
where in, in a game where so many deep balls have been thrown and not one time was the receiver beyond the defenders. Laney's secondary has done a just amazing job of staying with the receiver and staying in good coverage. So Aquinas, Laney takes over. Aquinas might be headed to a region title too as they've increased their lead to 16 points in the fourth quarter over Stratford. It's 30 to 14. Looks like Silver Bluff season is going to come to an end. They're trailing Woodland 21 to nothing in the fourth. Yeah, the local squads, Nathan's pointing out the local teams in, on the South Carolina side where they started the playoffs tonight, not faring so well. So let's see if the Wildcats started trying to chew some clock here. And Jordan Stringer, the man of 100 yards rushing tonight, will pick up a couple more. Yeah, they got 200 yard backs tonight. If I'm not mistaken, I know Washington's Washington. over, and I think Stringer is uh, also is. If he's not, he's close. And don't forget, don't forget foot, football Friday night coming up over on WJBF News Channel 6. Not only will Nathan Palm and Zach Hughes have all of the scores and highlights for the playoff games in South Carolina and these, these clutch region championship games in Georgia, but also, of course, the rosters revealed for Border Bowl 5. That's coming up on football Friday night, 1135 over on WJBF. News Channel 6. Yeah, Stringer not caring at that time. He's he's 11 yards shy of 100. He was oh, shy of 100. I thought he already had it. Uh, Washington is over. My uh, math my yeah. math deceived me with, with uh, Stringer. Well, by the way, Thompson, Richmond Academy trying to kick the ball out of bounds. They didn't kick it quite far enough. Tuck catches it and takes it back for a touchdown wow. to put, AR, put uh, Thompson up 48-34 on Richmond. Richmond, man, a great year. And, again, Lyle Burns got that job less than, mm -hmm. well, I think, two weeks before the season started. Third and good four, job. they go to Stringer, and he's going to be stopped short. Matt Lane reminds us from the field, speaking of streaks. Uh-oh. As, as A.B. rubs his brow, I mean, I'm he's sweating anguish. a little bit. Here's the stump A.B. trivia question is still coming. And they, they say a first down on that carry? Oh, they're going, okay, there we go, all right. Laney going for it on fourth down from its own 46 yard line. I'm not sure I understand this. It is fourth and about three. But you can Nugent one call, that's all a moment for Rodney McFadden. Uh, Let's see if it pays off. Confident in their defense more than anything else, but they get the first down yeah, on a nice Chad run. Welcher. I, again, I think that just showed how confident, how confident he is in their defense more than anything else. It's almost like he knows more than we know. <laughs> yeah. Let's go down to Matt Lane for another Augusta Auto Auction sideline report. Matt, what do you got? Yeah, John, throughout the game, you know, I know you and Ashley have both talked about it, the, uh, the youth on Josie's football team. It seems like each and every not only timeout but really breaking the action where whether the offense or the defense comes to the sideline, all the coaches from Josie really reminding the kids to stay calm, keep your head in the game, don't get you know too mad or too excited by each individual play as they're all just a series of them, and that's what takes you down the field for drives on offense and then stopping drives when you're on defense. So you guys talking about that throughout the game, and that's certainly something that the coaches are really playing up, being very supportive of the players when they come off the field even after uh, kickoffs and kick returns, just to try to keep that positive momentum going, uh, not only to finish out this year, but to start next year. Washington picked up four yards on the carry. And into Josie territory now are the Wildcats, as the clock is becoming Josie's enemy here. Just more than six minutes left to play. And that is big Maurice Page just dragging guys ahead all the way down to the Josie 25 five yard line wow I don't, I don't want to take anything away from page you know i have an affinity for these big running backs <laughs> but it looked like he he took off early here he got away with the per, with the false start i think boy he was going quick if not he just was going super quick but yeah great run 20 yards on the carry and the last 10 or 11 with three yeah. black yeah. shirts dragging behind him so it's uber, first uber, 10. uber driver there <laughs> First to 10 from the 26, and now we have a false start. Yeah. 
first down. Don't forget our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game coming up after we're through here. Yeah, big night uh, tonight at Grovetown High School uh, as well. and They lead Lakeside 17-0. The Atlanta Falcons do a thing uh, at a lot of the places in Georgia where there are military bases, and it was a military appreciation night, and they had the Falcons cheerleaders. Freddie the Falcon was there. Oh, they had special cool. uniforms for the players and uh, outfits for the coaches, uh, military, you know, themed, uh, patriotic themed. They had a skydiver coming in with the American flag for the national anthem, so a nice night out there at Grovetown. There was some confusion on the snap from Laney, and Sumter was dropped for a loss. It was Darian Hirschner, 176-pound defensive lineman, making the tackle for Josie. A.B., you have an update from that big Evans game. Well... It might not be good for Evans. Mm. Evans is trailing now. They led 24 to nothing, mm. and they're now down 35-34 against Heritage. And a Napleton Infinity Bagasta timeout on the field. We will take one with them. Hey. Laney second and 15 from the Josie 30-yard line as the Cats trying to He's put this one away. With 5.28 left to play and already up two scores. And this is going to be Sumter on the keeper. And he'll be inside the 20-yard line as the Wildcats enter the Augusta Technical College red zone again. They've gotten there almost, every, I think, every possession but one tonight. Uh, of course, they were able to, they went for it on fourth and didn't get it one occasion. They fumbled it one time as well. And they're putting this thing away. Another score, and this thing is all but over. Barring a miracle. I mean, Josie has had a hard time scoring all season, much less just tonight. And you're asking them to score already twice, maybe three times, if Lane's able to get it in here. Well, they are in the Augusta Technical College red zone, but he was just short of the first down, so it is third and about a half a yard. And, well, Stringer will take care of that and then some down inside the 10 yard line to the five. Well, that puts him over 350 yards rushing on the night, right after he took it. And Stringer approaching 100 now. He's going to be over 100 or close to it, 99, somewhere in there. And looking back, 103 now for Stringer. You are correct, A.B. The Wildcats have been in the red zone every drive but one. So the offensive efficiency is there for Rodney McFadden's crew, but not necessarily on that play as Darian Hirschner makes another big stop, dropping Sumter for a loss. Yeah, terrific play there. Hirschner. Loss of four. Just beat his man, just one-on-one, -on -one and just was able to just push his way through. Go back to Cats up to the nine. Fox. Clock continues to run under four minutes now. Left in this one and in our regular season here on Game Night Live. And 22 and two picks on picks last week. I'm gonna have uh, not quite so good this week. I got some, I got some uh, apologies for to Aquinas and, and <laughs> Screven County. Evans is late trailing now. So some weird games, uh, North Augusta trailing. Sumter being chased. End zone, touchdown, Maurice Page. The big well, man gets in for six. Glad to see the big fella get in. He's been a lead blocker. <laughs> He's had a couple of nice runs, caught a couple out of the backfield. That is a big man right there. He's. I got a feeling next year there are going to be some colleges knocking on his door. Good throw on the run, too, by Sumter. Put it right on the money. So the junior gives Laney a 24 to 6 lead with the Augusta Technical, uh, whoops, the Georgia Military College kicks for college extra point, forthcoming. Now Sumter will hold and for the Laney Wildcats, it's number 88. Uh, Jay Graham. Jay Graham. As we're opening kickoff. He's going to miss it wide right, and I cannot figure out for the life of me how in the world uh, Tavion, Tavion, Tavion Redfield did not block that. He came practically unblocked off the right edge, but the extra point no good. So your score with 318 left, Laney 24, Josie 6.
The Laney lead is now 18 with three minutes and 18 seconds left to play. On the return for the Wildcats will be Godby. And he'll push it ahead to the 35 yard line. That's where the Eagles will set up shop, but they need a whole bunch of yards and a whole bunch of points, not a whole lot of time to do it. Well, it has been a long night. Uh, you know, that first score, they came out all fired up, ready to play against the rival. They marched down the field, an excellent drive, and punch it in 6 0 and 6 0. It's been all late. The, the total yardage disparity Nathan just gave us before that last run 420 mm. yards to 63. It's surprising that it's not worse than 24 to 6 based on that. The Laney drive covered 62 yards and took six minutes, just less than six minutes off the clock. So let's see what the Eagles do here, down 18, and they'll keep it on the ground straight ahead. And that is Jacoby Ham, who has been one of the bright spots on offense for Josie tonight. He picks up four yards, give him five, why not, up to the 40. Nathan's also an even crazier stat. Josie had 52 yards on their first drive, so only 11 yards of offense since that point. Well, they're going to get some there as <laughs> yeah. the pass is complete to Xavier Reed all the way down at the Laney 31-yard line. That is a 29-yard pass play. Set the Eagles up first and 10 at the Laney 31 yard line. And we shoved out of bounds, so the clock stops with 2.14 left to play. Now they're saying put 229 back on the clock because apparently it continued to run after he was knocked out of bounds. So that's what the delay is on the field. They're waiting for the clock keeper to get things straight. And now they are, and we should be ready to go. Our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game coming up after the conclusion of this one as Fluella runs it to the right. Yeah, tough, tough calls in all honesty uh, on both sides of the ball because you got two great backs, Washington and Stringer, both over 100 yards. And defensively, A.J. Walker, Chad Welcher, Dikeese King have all played well. Flewellen to throw on second down, and it is up for grabs and falls incomplete at the three-yard line. That was King again. Yeah, we called his name a couple of times. And well, he was back to knock it down. Yeah, the secondary just played so well. So we'll bring up third down now, third and six. Seven yard line. As the clock stops with 211 to play. Llewellyn to throw. Over the middle and over everybody. Incomplete. Fourth down. This, of course, our final broadcast of the regular season, but once again, we will be back with you after the start of the new year on January 6th at 11 in the morning over at Lucy Laney Stadium for Border Bowl 5. And a reminder, once again, the rosters for the Border Bowl teams, Georgia and South Carolina, will be revealed tonight on Football Friday Night over on WJBF News Channel 6 at 11.35. Eagles are going to go for it, obviously, on 4th and 6 here. big play with something. I mean, even though the clock is winding down here. That's a completion to Redfield. He's got room down inside the 20-yard line to the 16, but hold everything. 
There is a flag back behind the line of scrimmage. And, uh, I guess this is all for naught. Uh, Flewellen was disappointed. The quarterback kind of played it. They finally had some success. I've got a sportsman like here. It's number. Tell him number five was back. Ham, junior running back. And I don't know if you at home could hear the official. We could hear him in our ears saying. Number five knows what he did. He knows exactly what he did. We don't know what he did, but apparently number five does know. So the official explaining it to the Josie team now that uh, that Ham had cost them number five a was first put, He shoved so. So the official explaining that the the foul occurred behind the play as Ham apparently shoved somebody to the ground. And that's going to cost the Eagles a first down. Not only that, but it's going to back them up all the way to the 49-yard line. They have to get to the 21 for a first down. So this is going to be fourth and they got to get to the almost to the Savannah River for a first down. It's fourth and 28. Clock under two minutes as well. And by the way, big news in that Evans game. I'm not going to give it away. We're going to save that one for football Friday night. As that one is picked off, the last gasp attempt by Josie. And guess who? Dykees King with the interception. And now we've got a flag. Oh, boy. Easy. Easy. Let's hold yeah, cooler heads prevail. We don't need anything like this. And now we've got a full-on melee on the Laney sideline. And the referee's trying to... And now we have some fans and players and just a mess on the Laney sideline. Well, they just kicked one player out, and I think we're going to have more. Now people are coming out of the stands. Yeah, this is not a good situation. And the Josie, play, to their credit, Josie tried to stay out of it. But now, what do you do when everybody is on the Laney side? I mean, well, we we have heard in our ear that one player has been ejected, and I, I believe it might be good Dan. job by the Laney coaches to keep the fans out of it as much as they could. Now we have the police, the sheriff's office, on the field trying to keep the peace. Now, no sense in that. I mean, I know it's a rivalry game, but it is a game after all, right? And we're going to have a lot of flags. We're going to have, it's going to take a while to sort all this out. And we're going to have a laundry list of ejections. Well, so far we know. So far, we know a couple. We know Jacoby Ham for Josie is out, and we know A.J. Walker of Laney is out, and there could be more. Yeah, I believe we're going to have a couple of more. The officials are meeting to talk about it right now. Let's see what happened here if we can at the end of the play. Josie is trying to throw it downfield. Pass intercepted. And there, I'll nothing's going it. on. The play's over. No, don't see anything. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, not sure exactly what happened to start it all. So we are told from our truck that uh, one player threw the ball at another player, and that is what instigated the whole thing. So from the truck, our director, Scott Elledge, tells us that uh, Myron Godby of Josie threw the ball at Chad Welcher. And if you, as you see on your screen right now, it appears as though the officials are just going to let the clock wind down and, and call this thing over. You know, that might be the best thing in this spot. Yeah. Uh, the game was not going to end in any other way other than a Laney victory. No point taking a chance of anybody getting hurt. Well, the Josie team is still sitting on its bench. The Laney team has walked off the field. Well, that is and probably the right call for sure. I say probably for sure. That is the right <laughs> call. 
And the clock is winding down. It continues to run now inside the minute as the Bobcats are headed to their locker room well, and to the bus. You hate to see it in this way, and you hate to see game night live season in this yeah. way, but it is what it is. It was a, a good, good performance by Laney. They get the win, and it marred by some pushing and shoving there and maybe a couple of punches thrown, but doesn't look like anybody was hurt. That's the most important thing, and the officials – Again, just letting the clock run out. It will be a laney victory, 24 to 6. So I have less than a minute to get in the final stump. I know. We thought, we had more I time thought I had time. more time, but here we go. Okay, so obviously Dion Grant, former Josie star. I couldn't find an exact number, but he's one of a pretty exclusive club to win a state championship in high school, a national championship in college, and a Super Bowl while in the NFL. So this question is. Yeah, but what? The question for you, A.B., that 1998 Tennessee team when he won a, na a national championship, I think you know who they beat. I do. And that Florida was State. Florida State. The clock officially ticks down to zero, and that will end the game. That was Florida State's second loss of the 1998 season. Who else did Florida State lose to in 1998? Wow, I got to know this one, right? I would think so. Tell you what, we're going to let A.B. have yes. a moment to think yes. about it while we take one more <laughs> break. The game has officially come to an end. Your final score, the Laney Wildcats 24, the Josie Eagles 6. Back at Eagle Way Stadium where the Laney Wildcats have defeated their arch rival Josie 24 to six in a game that was marred at the end by an ugly brawl that saw people coming out of the stands. And so the officials cut this game short and just let the clock run inside the final two minutes. And A.B. is still trying to think of his I'm answer struggling. to the trivia question, which was, I'm gonna guess who them. did Florida State lose to in the regular season in 1998 before losing in the national championship game to Tennessee. I'm going to guess Southern Cal. It, I, it's, it's somebody that they played Southern Cal, Notre Dame, a bunch of teams there in the late 90s, early in the year. It wasn't Miami. That would have been too easy. I don't think you'd ask that. I don't think it's Southern Cal, but I can't think of anybody they played. Obviously, they, they lost to Virginia. Uh, back in the work done, that was a big loss. But NC State, some will go with. Is that your final answer, yes. NC State? Yes. Unbelievable. That is that is correct. Te technically, <laughs> technically, <laughs> technically a little unfair because I was thinking Southern Cal the whole way. But congratulations, you finished the regular season well, undefeated with an asterisk. With an asterisk, though. That I'm going to have to come stronger for Border Bowl. <laughs> I'll have to go with something fancy for that. Well. Uh, getting back to this, congratulations, by the way. That was, that was very impressive. Did you know it the whole time? Or I, I just remember Chuck Amata had beaten uh, several yes. times, so I was thinking NC State. But I, but I was thinking it had to be early in the year because of getting back in the championship game. But I guess it was like one of the first ACC games. So there you go. <laughs> All right. All right. So, uh, Laney, a big winner over Josie. Uh, again, neither of these teams go into the playoffs. But uh, something to build on for the Wildcats next year. Well, they're both young. That's the key. Uh, it, Josie is as well with just three seniors and, you know, a lot of young players and of course, for Laney, they have freshman running back, a sophomore running back that looks really good on both sides of the ball in Welcher. Yeah, I mean, that, the, the future's bright, but, you know, what, you, what you've got to do is you've got to they, – they've got to continue to improve. And you got to, and you got to get some – you've got to get more numbers if you're Josie. You've got to have more players. You can't have 25 players. You're not going to be able to compete with that many numbers. And, again, an, another reminder that uh, the – Border Bowl is coming up January 6th on WJBF News Channel 6. Kickoff at 11 a.m. from Laney Stadium. And we are now, let's see, just an hour and a half away from the reveal of the rosters for Team Georgia and Georgia, the Team South Carolina on Football Friday and night. And you don't want to miss Football Friday night because teams going for region titles, Aquinas, Evans, and a few others, some unbelievable games uh, that you'll get to see the highlights of and some final scores. I mean, unbelievable games. Uh, like I said, with, for those teams going for region titles, not just the Screven Jefferson County game, Aquinas, Evans, and a few others in some tight games. So while we wait to reveal our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game, we can take a look back at kind of how we got here, A.B. 
with yeah, let's uh, do that. highlights of the night. And it uh, started early. early for Josie. Yeah, I mean, just right off the bat, there's Ham, uh, who looked good running the ball on that first drive, and he gets in there, Jacoby Ham, for the touchdown. And that got uh, Josie on the board. But Laney really did a good job of answering. They didn't wait around. They came right back, and they just went into a three-back set. The old wishbone formation just kind of ran it down Josie's throat with a long, long drive, and they were able to punch it in as well. And here's another look at Ham here and of course, on the first touchdown for Josie. His night was marred later as he was involved. He had an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty in the fourth quarter and then was involved in that brawl that ended this game prematurely. The Josie team is still out on the field as we continue to take you through the first half highlights. And this is Stringer. It Jordan could be Stringer, who it could be because of the field house situation yeah. keeping them separated as they change and get you know Laney leaves. And then that was the second touchdown of the night uh, was Chad Welcher as Laney started to roll at that point and ends up with a 28 to six win. So they're keeping the team separated. Josie's still out on the field. Laney in the locker room. We understand. Uh, Matt Lane is down on the field with uh, Laney head coach uh, Rodney McFadden. So let's check in for an no, Augusta uh, Auto Coach Roundtree side sideline. Side but this is actually a, we're going to go down to the Josie sideline and Coach Raleigh Roundtree who can probably shed some more light on this situation. Matt. Yeah, thanks, John. Down on the on the field with Coach Roundtree. Coach, obviously not the outcome you were looking for in terms of the game. Really young team this year. I, I saw each and every time it seemed like they came off the field. You were telling them to keep their heads in the game, keep their head up, really being very supportive. What have you kind of seen from your team in terms of the growth ending this year and then starting next year that you kind of has you on a positive outlook? Uh, like I said, you can never never take care of experience. Uh, experience has to play itself out. Uh, we only had six seniors this year, so everybody was underclassmen. So they played most of the year. The year was pretty tough, but like I say, underclassmen playing, getting experience is going to help us out next year. What did you like about kind of what you watched from your team this year? You were with them each and every day. How did you see them grow throughout the year? Uh, a lot of growth. I saw guys starting to play, and like I say, starting, like I said, I saw a lot of freshmen, sophomores. So we should be good next year. But like I say, the growth, maturity, uh, playing hard, uh, experience, that's the biggest thing we got out this year, experience. Last year we had a lot of the seniors. This year we only had like six. So next year we should be fine to go. Well, I'll let you get back with your team. We appreciate you having us out tonight, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Back to you, John. All right, Matt Lane, and our thanks to Coach Raleigh Roundtree of Josie. And obviously with a situation as unusual as how this game ended, it's sort of an unusual post game for us. We usually honor our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game, but because they are keeping these two teams separated, uh, we're not gonna be able to uh, bring those players out and have them on television, but we will uh, reveal them here in just a second. Before we do that, I wanna make sure we recognize everybody, this being our final broadcast of the regular season, I wanna make sure we uh, mention the folks who are behind the scenes who have made all of this possible this year, and that includes our directors tonight, Scott Elledge and Brendan Riccardi, earlier this year, Chris McCarthy. On replay, we have Mike Ludwikowski, graphics, Dion Mayo and Josh Recor. Our audio man, Jeff Singleton, making a sound good in the truck. On cameras tonight, John Holden, Rick Cruson, Will McKettrick, William Baker, and Devin Johnson. Alice Woodruff, uh, Woodruff operating our field mic for us tonight. Kevin Chang, uh, on the, in, they call him the red cap. He's uh, the guy who lets them know when they can play and when they can't, when we're in commercial breaks. Kaylee Foster on the sidelines for us. Our timer tonight, Katie Shannon, and our engineer keeping us on the air, Philip Scott. Thanks to everybody behind the scenes who has made this such a successful season of Game Night Live. And now, without further ado, let's reveal our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game, maybe. Well, on offense, we're going to go with the freshman, Jordan Stringer. He had over 100 yards rushing and two touchdowns, really set the tone early on the first few drives. Uh, and he's got a big, big future here. So congratulations, Jordan Stringer, number 28 in white for the Laney Wildcats, our uh, McDonald's offensive player of the game. And on defense, a guy you liked early on, mm -hmm. really played well, and that's Dakis King, who uh, not only had a bunch of pass breakups and was in on some tackles, he never let his guy behind him the whole game, and then he ended up with the interception there at the end of the ball game that sealed the deal for Laney as well. So congratulations to number two in white, Dakis King, our defensive player of the game from the Laney Wildcats. So Laney improves to three and seven on the season, three and four in the region, just barely missing the playoffs with that loss to Harlem last week. And Josie falls to 1-9 and nine on the season, 0-7 oh on the season. Well, A.B., it's been a heck of a season, man. I've had a lot of fun. I guess I'll see you in January. I'll see you in January. We're looking forward <laughs> looking to that. I had a great time. I, no, it's been a great yeah. time. And uh, 
Uh, your final thoughts on uh, this season as a whole, what we've seen? Well, I, we saw the best atmosphere in the history of Game Night Live last week, I think, at Burke County. Uh, one of the best atmospheres I've ever seen in high school football. Tremendous. We saw, obviously, great individual performances throughout the year. A lot of those kids were underclassmen, which is good to see. Uh, you know, we'll see how far some of our guys can go, our teams in the area can go in the playoffs. We saw a dynamic Evans offense. They went a, uh, got a chance for a region title. Looks like they're headed into a home playoff game. And uh, their quarterback, Demikas Taylor, was one of the best players in the area. He stands out. And also just, uh, you know, you know, just the all the staff at all the schools just being so hospitable to us everywhere we go. Uh, we appreciate that, certainly. Absolutely. And even though this is our final broadcast of the regular season, uh, A.B. and I will continue to take you through the playoffs. Tell everybody about your Facebook page. That's right. Yeah, you can follow me on Facebook, Ashley Brown on Facebook. And each week we uh, not only do picks for the games, but we'll have a player of the week. And we've been doing a poll, although they're in the playoffs now, so that sort of goes by, sort of goes by the wayside. But it's been a lot of fun. And a lot of the fans and parents of players and stuff, I've been interacting with. It's been, it's been a lot of fun, creating some discussion for high school football, no doubt. <laughs> and starting next week, I will rejoin our, our football Friday night team as we there take you go. through the yeah. playoffs as well on WGWF News Channel 6. Well, uh, don't forget, if you want to watch the rebroadcast of this game, you can catch it in its entirety coming up this Sunday at noon on WJBF News Channel 6. And coming up in just more than an hour, football Friday night with the scores and highlights from all of tonight's playoff and region championship games from across the area, as well as the reveal of the roster for Border Bowl 5. That's coming up football Friday night, 1135, over on WJBF News Channel 6 with Nathan Paul and Zach Hughes. Uh, here on MeTV, we will be joining our regularly scheduled program already in in progress. Uh, your final score, once again, the Laney Wildcats 24, the Josie Eagles 6. From broadcast partner Ashley Brown, Matt Lane down on the field. From all of us here at Game Night Live, happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and then we will see you January 6th at 11 in the morning for Border Bowl 5. Until then, good night from Eagle Way Stadium.